In this video, we're gonna be combining gimbal moves with speed ramps, and using just a few simple techniques, I'm gonna show you how you can shoot a sequence that looks like this. Hey everyone, Steve here from Learn Online Video, and today I'm at this incredible location here in the southwest of England, where I'm gonna be showing you how you can add speed ramps to your gimbal moves. I'm gonna be giving you tips on camera movement, gimbal modes, we're gonna be faking drone shots, tips on editing, sound effects, everything you need to shoot and edit a sequence of your own. A huge thanks to Zhuin for sponsoring this video and for sending out the all new Smooth 5S. This is a great gimbal for these types of shots because it's small, lightweight and easy to use but as always all gear used in this video will be linked in the description below. Now very quickly what is a speed ramp? A speed ramp is when you change the speed of part of your clip so you could speed up the start, you could speed up the end, you could even speed up the middle. Also a speed ramp gradually accelerates and decelerates rather than an abrupt speed up or slow down. Now you can do this in just about any editing software. I'm using Final Cut, Adobe Premiere Pro has this feature, iMovie and DaVinci Resolve have this feature and they are both free. Now let me quickly show you the most basic version of this technique with a simple push forward shot. I'm going to keep my focal point in the center of frame and my movement smooth and steady. Now in the edit I want to speed ramp into this clip so I'm going to skim to where I want the speed ramp to stop about there and I'm going to hit shift B on a Mac. The keys might be different in your editing software but the tech technique is exactly the same and I'm going to speed up the start of this clip by 4000% and we now have a clip that starts with a speed ramp. Camera settings. Now I'm shooting everything in 4K 60 frames per second. 4K because that's going to give me a nice high resolution image. 60 frames per second because that's going to allow me to slow my footage down in the edit if needed. Now here are some very important tips for shooting your footage. First of all, make sure you lock your focus and exposure for each shot. You can do this by simply tapping and holding on your focal point like this. This will ensure there are no nasty exposure or focus changes during each shot and will help your footage look much more professional. Camera movement. Now the aim of the game here is to capture shots that are nice, smooth and steady. We also want our shots to be quite long as we're going to be speeding them up. I find between 5 and 10 seconds is usually enough. Now sometimes I find these shots easier to capture pushing forward, other times I find them easier pulling back. Remember, you can always reverse your shot in the edit. Also, try shooting shots with a bit of foreground in the frame and reveal your focal point. This can work really well in the edit. Now, for those of you that have been subscribed to this channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of faking a drone shot. So let's capture one now using this three meter long extension pole. The gimbal extension pole combo is a great way to level up your speed ramps as you're able to capture movements and perspectives that would usually be associated with a drone or a crane. So a great way of adding more production value to your videos. Also, mix up your focal lengths. If your camera has more than one lens, then take advantage of it. Here is a shot using the ultra-wide lens, and here is a shot using the standard lens. It's much more zoomed in, so works really well for detailed shots. Gimbal modes. Now, I'm using four different gimbal modes to capture this footage today. We've got pan follow, lock, vortex, and POV. Let me show you what difference each of those gimbal modes makes to your footage. Let's start with pan follow mode. Now, in this mode, the camera pans as you turn, so great for an orbit shot like this one here. Now, lock mode will lock the direction of your camera and it will not move. And this comes in really useful for push forward or pullback shots. Vortex mode. In this mode, you'll be able to rotate your camera a full 360 degrees. And this is a great effect to add to your speed ramp sequences, especially when using them to transition from one clip to the next. POV. Now, POV is by far one of my favorite modes for these types of shots, as it allows full range of motion on all three axes. And this creates a much more immersive experience for the audience, allowing you to capture shots that look like this. 
editing and sound effects. Now, this is where the magic happens and is the key to a successful speed ramp sequence. Let me give you a very basic formula for editing your footage that creates a seamless transition between each clip. Now, we have three clips on the timeline. I'm going to speed ramp into the first clip, play it at real time in the middle, and then speed ramp out of it. I'm then going to repeat that exact same process for the next two clips. We now have a short sequence that speed ramps in and out of each clip. This creates a nice smooth transition between each shot and we could just keep going with this, applying it to as many clips as we like. Also, adding sound effects is really going to help bring this footage to life. Experiment with whoosh sound effects or anything you think might work with your shots. I will put a link to a free music and sound effects trial in the description below. Also, if you really want to add a bit of extra spice to your edits, then try adding motion blur to your speed ramps. This will blur the shot slightly, make it feel more fluid and help emphasize the movement. So that is how you add speed ramps to your gimbal moves. If you'd like to learn more about smartphone filmmaking and gimbal moves, then I have plenty more videos on this channel. I highly recommend checking out this one here, which will teach you eight creative transitions. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.